Hello, reformers, and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. And of course, this is the five year anniversary special series. And I hope you're all enjoying it. I hope you're all enjoying it because I actually really quite like Native a lot. And even though it may not have some of the intricacies that other mods have in Mountain Blade, obviously, you know, you are going to have. A much better experience, I suppose, if you were to play something like Floris, or maybe if you wanted to have something a little bit more of a total conversion, then you might have a more fun time playing something like Perizno or Pendor, or maybe even a Clash of Kings or a World of Ice and Fire or something along those lines if you wanted to have something a little bit familiar, because obviously a lot of people are a big fan of the show and the books and everything, and so, you know, if you wanted to do something like that, then you can, and that's the that's the beauty of Warband in general, because it seems like there is, well, I would say maybe almost no limit to the amount of content that you can get in a game like this, because the modding community is fantastic. They do a very good job. They do a very good job in basically just creating anything your mind could want. Obviously, there are those exceptions where maybe, you know, maybe you're wanting something a little bit different and maybe it's just not available and that's that's a shame. But, you know, in, in general, it's it's always going to be there and it's, it's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm actually, hmm, what am I going to do here? I actually don't know. I think I'm probably just going to Swap out this, thank you very much. Do we have... Uh, no, we still don't have any good armor, do we? No, I'm just going to take everything, thank you very much, because, yeah, I'm going to take all the loot this time around, because obviously back in the day, I did not. Everyone was screaming at me. <laughs> Why don't you take that loot? And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I can't really, because... I don't really want a full inventory, but why not? <laughs> why not? Why shouldn't I have a full inventory? Because I can just go and sell it right away. I have a new shield which is nice. I have a new shield, so that's going to come in handy. Going to sell most of everything else. I am actually going to be, I think, wait a minute, that's trade, isn't it? I think that is actually trade skill, so that's kind of pointless, I guess. Going to sell the bent jareds. I'm, I think I'm probably going to sell these as well, because I can probably find some better ones. Now, there's some war darts. Can I find some better ones? No, it seems like I can't actually find some better ones, but I, I have a lance at the moment, so I think that's absolutely fine. Is there some armor that I can get that it's pre that's pretty cheap, but a little bit better than what I have? No, not really. There is actually something there, but it loses us a bunch of body armor, and I don't really don't really care too much about that. But as you can see, the Saranid body armor, or at, at the very least, the Saranid armor that we can acquire at the Saranid towns are pretty decent. Obviously, some of these are not actually Saranid focused, like for example, this. Battered, Br Battered Brigandine, it's not really. Rusty Heraldic Mail, Heraldic Mail with Surcoat, Thick Plate Armor. They're not really in keeping with the Saranid theme, so we may not decide to, you know, actually go with that. We may decide to do something a little bit different. Anyway, what we're going to do today is, I think, probably try to complete a Guildmaster quest, because the Guildmaster quest sometimes has some very good rewards. Most notably, the kidnapped daughter. I'm hopeful that I'll be able to find the kidnapped daughter quest, because if I'm able to do that, then there's experience involved, perhaps traveling involved, which would then open us up to finding even more bandits. And then, obviously, you do have the overwhelming cash that you're able to get. I mean, it's not, it's not particularly overwhelming, is it? But it's a nice little bonus for partaking in a pretty easy fight. So hopefully we'll be able to... Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to do this just because, but I highly doubt I'll be able to find these bandits. I mean, uh, let's just have a look at the quest real quick. Who attacked travelers near De Cuba? Right. Right, okay. So I... Uh, okay, yeah. I'm not particularly a big fan of this, of this quest. I have never been a big fan of this quest. This is perhaps second. Oh, there they are. There they are. Oh, they're moving at 6.5. I'm moving at 5.6. It's a complete reversal of numbers. I'm not particularly happy about that. But yeah, I was just about to say that this is actually second in my most hated tasks from the Guildmaster, but it seems that he's, he's slowing down. I, I don't know why. Oh, oh, yeah. Yep, 
You, oh, maybe, maybe we'll be able to do it. Maybe we'll be able to catch him finally. And yes, we are. I am so, so surprised. Literally so surprised. I was not expecting us to be able to find them, let alone catch them. Because, of course, the desert bandits are very fast. And I'm thinking that we're probably going to move into the north soon. What I'd like to do is try and, you know, take a, a maximum army. So we'll hopefully get max cap pretty soon. If we haven't already, I'm actually unsure what our maximum cap is at the moment. But yeah, we're just going to tell everyone to charge in here and, you know, do some damages. And, you know, Barney is going to be hopefully... Le oh, yes, he did actually level up, didn't he? Yes, I should probably... Spec him into something a little bit and help him out a bit as well. You know, obviously he's going to maybe spec into some horse archery. I personally feel like horse archery, eh, it's kind of a little bit of a hit and miss for me because sometimes I'm amazing on a horse, which is very rare, but other times I'm actually decent. And, you know, it would be kind of nice to uh, sort of know what's going to happen before I actually do something about it. But anyway, now we can head back to Cuba and hand in that quest. I was really kind of dreading losing relation with the town if I was actually going to lose... Re oh, I should go and help some village farmers. Let's go and help some village farmers. There's a bunch of desert bandits attacking them. I think it might be useful to do that. Now, we do actually have some cavalry, as you can see here. I actually did level up some of the veteran footmen that we have into Saranid horsemen. And I know in the previous episode I was talking about how... I maybe should not go for cavalry so soon because obviously cavalry can be quite difficult to control at times because you have them running off and, you know, obviously they're going to run off and, and just be by themselves and we're not going to have enough of them. But then I noticed that we do actually have some manhunters and the manhunters are obviously going to make a big difference in, you know, my decision about how much we're going to create in terms of cavalry, of course. Because if we, you know, if we had... Let us say we just had two cavalry from the Saranid units. That would be pretty harsh, and we'd probably have to micromanage them quite a lot. But now, considering we have 12, oh well, 12, not 12, 10, but probably 12 or 13 after this particular battle, because no doubt we're going to gain some pretty decent experience, perhaps. But after this, we might indeed be able to have even more, which would be quite nice. So yeah, we're actually going to be leaving these horses in my inventory right now because, of course, they're pretty decent. You know, they're pretty decent. And I'm actually wondering whether I should use this sword. Uh, not really. I don't really want to do that, to be honest. I mean, I know I was going to use only Saranid equipment. And I'm not entirely sure, is a Falchion a Saranid weapon? Not really, is it? It's not really a Saranid weapon, so that's kind of a bit meh. You know, it's not really good for me to do that, but I, I don't know. It's just, it's our main weapon. I'd like to get a saber of some sort or, you know, maybe something like that. Maybe a mace, maybe the mace that the Mamluks use. I think that would be kind of nice. Let's actually just take a look here real quick. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what they use. Is it is it the Heavy Morning Star? Maybe. But, yeah, other than that, I I don't know. I can't really see anything. There's a Nordic war sword here. I mean, I'd very much appreciate a Saranid Saber or something along those lines because it's very similar to the Falchion in the way that it just uses cutting damage. There's no, there's no thrust. And I appreciate that quite a bit. Anyway, we're going to be selling a bunch of our loot here. And then we will go and speak to the Guildmaster and hand in the quest. Now... If before you comment saying, oh, you, you just sold a helm that was, uh, yeah, better than what you have. Yeah, I am actually doing that on purpose, as you can see here. I do know that this has 17 and this has 15, but two, two head armor is not going to make that much difference. And also, we are obviously role-playing, kind of, kind of a loose role-play. It's not really, you know, very strict, but I'm trying my best to kind of make it work because obviously... The Saranid armor is pretty lightweight for the most part, unless you get Mamluk mail and things like that. And I'm actually having a difficult time finding a helm. Ah, there's a helm. Okay, I could actually buy that right now, and it looks really good. I mean, look at that, 891 for plus 44 to head armor. I think that's pretty nice. But, as I say, I kind of don't want to spend any money on anything, with the exception of Enterprises, because obviously we are going to need Enterprises to sustain our army as we go forward. 
And of course, maybe I'll have to do a couple of tournaments as well, but the tournaments I don't think are going to be too difficult because this is native, obviously, and I'm used to much more difficult tournaments, but you know me, sometimes I get a little bit overconfident and then I'm just like, oh, this is super easy, but in actual fact, it's actually not. Ooh, very nice. Oh, look at that. Wow, that is amazing. A thousand dinars for hunting down some bandits, and the bandits were pretty easy to find as well. I like it. Okay, so I wish to buy land in this place. I would like to build... Well, technically, I'd like to build an ironworks. How much is that? Profit is only going to be 60? Wow, that is not very much, is it? What about weavery and dye works? Now, that is the money maker, as you can see. 550 dinars right there. All right, so we're going to go into the arena. And I'm actually going to ask... Kudan, Yelen, and Cherise. Ah, Cherise is close by. Maybe we want to partake in that tournament. That might be quite nice, considering there are no other... Ah, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm forgetting something. I'm forgetting something. Yeah, I need to go and check for a ransom broker. It doesn't seem like there is one. And the Traveler, of course, does not have the option to look for a ransom broker. But in mods, he does. So there is obviously, you know, the ease of, ease of life, quality of life sort of improvements that you get with some mods. But the thing is, is that, as I say, I didn't want to go for Flores because they changed the units dramatically. And I actually really like the native units because they all have a, a kind of unique identity. And even though they do in Flores as well, they kind of make it a little bit too much, if you know what I mean. I, yeah, so that's the thing. I, I don't really think that they make it too much. Like, I personally feel like Flores is one of the best native overhauls there is. But... I just really like the charm, I suppose you could say. I like the charm and I like the nostalgia of the older units. I personally feel like you can't get any better than running around with, I don't know, running around with some Saranid Mamluks and, you know, if you're in, in the Swadian territory, running around with Swadian knights and Nords having the Huskars and everything. And just seeing those guys running around in combat is just fantastic. It's a wonderful feeling when you have an entire army full of these units because you can just stomp anything and it's really really nice to be able to do that even though it may be easy at points it's just really really cool in my opinion okay so there's Borcher I might like to take him actually so we're going to just talk to him in a second I think I've actually seen him before off screen because I think I came into the tavern at one point and I was like oh there's there's a companion let me speak to him because I wasn't sure whether he'd be free or not but he's 300 and at the time I didn't really have that much money so now that we actually do have money and we have now just gained another 700 which is fantastic I think it might be a nice idea to do this and oh yeah he's also a tracker which is fantastic so we will be able to hopefully track down bandits a little bit easier next time so let's actually just take a look okay so he has spotting and tracking so he's literally just going to be our spotter and tracker unless I find a Shavi in which case I actually really like her because the Shavi was my first ever companion as far as I'm aware I think I remember that she was the first ever companion and she stuck with me throughout the entirety of the original series which I absolutely loved she was really really good anyway he also has three in pathfinding so I think we're probably going to make him into our pathfinder and maybe yeah what we're going to do is we're just going to do spotting pathfinding tactics and tracking with him and then later on, when we've maxed out everything we can, we're probably going to do trainer as well, because obviously that's going to help us to level up units just that little bit quicker. So hopefully we're going to have, you know, a little bit of a better result there. He has absolutely terrible, terrible gear. He, he has a knife right now, so we're probably going to need to do something about that. Let's level up some of these guys. We're going to get some more Serenade Horsemen and, oh yeah, all of our recruits have leveled up. That's fantastic. Going to continue just getting mounted units at the moment and veteran footmen because even though I may like to get serenade infantry I personally feel like having an entire band of horsemen is going to come in mighty handy and the next level from serenade horsemen is actually a mamluk already I'm really surprised because it takes a long time to level up Swadian knights so maybe the mamluks are a little bit easier anyway let's see what we're doing here well that's the thing what are we doing? I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I'd like to level up leadership and prisoner management because no doubt we're going to be needing maybe a little bit more here. I think the 
reducing troop wages is obviously quite important. But more importantly, perhaps right now, because we don't really have a you know very legitimate way of getting renown, it's pretty nice to have that five troop increase to our maximum company size. So I think I might be doing that because right now we're hitting pretty hard already and we don't, I mean, that's the thing. We only have three in Power Strike and we're able to eliminate most of the enemy units, but obviously we're not fighting Sea Raiders just yet. I have a feeling that Sea Raiders are probably going to be extremely harsh. All right, so am I going to go for Horse Archery? If I go for Horse Archery right now, then it's going to be one of those things where I am locked in and I'm going to have to do it. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. What I do know is I think I'm probably going to go for one in Charisma here just to get it up to the next level. And then obviously when we hit level 6, then I have the option to go for Charisma 9. And then I can obviously spec into Leadership if I so desire. But for now, I'm going to be going for some extra in Power Strike. Because for the most part, I am... You know, I'm mostly a one-handed weapon user, and if I decide to have a two-handed at any one point, then obviously that's going to be pretty nice in itself. So, yeah, it seems like I was a little bit too late to get here for the tournament. So, obviously that's... Uh, that's not very nice, is it? No, it's not very nice, but... Yeah, can I take my horse up here? No, I can't, obviously. So, yeah, let's uh, let's just go up here. I now have another point in riding skill, by the way. I, th I kind of felt like it was about time to maybe get a better horse. And we do have a couple of horses in our inventory, and maybe one of them is riding skill too. So it would be kind of nice to swap that out. And I think, uh, yeah, oh, yeah oh, I'm not very good at finding the guild master in these places. I have to admit, I've not been to Serenid towns very often, if at all, in actual fact. And I think he's down. Yeah, there he is. He's down there. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's great, isn't it? That's absolutely fantastic. And then I obviously take some damage falling down there. That's fantastic too. Anyway, let's have a look. Oh. Okay. Okay, let's... <laughs> oh no. Let's track down these bandits, everyone. Yes. Right. Okay. Who attack travelers? Oh, deserters. Oh, okay. They might be quite difficult for us. Okay, the Kingdom of Rodox and the Serenets have made peace. That's nice for them. And I am... Worried. Am I going to be able to find them? Am I going to be able to? Well, there's a bunch of looters around here, but that's not really going to make too much difference. Okay, I've gone all the way around there, so that's not really... I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. They could go over here. They could go over here. They uh, they could literally just go off into the desert, and we wouldn't know any better, so... Oh, my. Okay, I guess what I'm going to do is to save a little bit of time. I'm actually going to cut away here, because obviously... We are going to have to search high and low for these bandits, hopefully, before they get killed by someone else. Alright, so we were lucky enough to run into these guys. I literally just went all the way around here, and then I went off into the desert in a straight line, trying to go between each of the, you know, towns, because I thought, well... If they want to attack villagers, they're probably going to have to go on the roads, or quote-unquote roads, because there aren't obviously any roads in the desert, but still. Point is, we now have caught up with them, and there's only 11, and they ha they are Saranid archers, in actual fact, so they might be they might be a little bit difficult. They might be a little bit difficult, because I don't think we've actually fought any, so we, shall we say, ranged units, like proper ranged units. We've maybe fought some, you know, some, what, what are they, some... You know, throwing weapon people, you know, rocks and so on and so forth. But yes, other than that, not really. It seems like they are moving towards us, so that's rather nice. But do I want to allow them to do that? I think I should probably just charge in, shouldn't I? I mean, I have 14 cavalry. I should be able to, in theory, just swarm them. But if they stand on top of that hill over there, then obviously our cavalry are going to be a lot slower than we would otherwise like. So maybe we're going to suffer a couple of casualties as a result, but hopefully not, because obviously cavalry is very, very powerful in native, and there's level 6. So hopefully level 6 will then give us the extra point in charisma, like I said beforehand, and then we will be in a really nice position to have 3 in leadership. And maybe what I'm actually going to do is I might be a little bit more, shall we say conservative or shall we say restrained when it comes to spending points in strength because usually I go for something like I don't know 24 27 strength or something like that but this time I think what I'm gonna do 
is I'll try and do maybe like 21 strength, maybe 21 strength, maybe 18 strength even. Because as it stands right now, I don't see the need to have any more than that, because most of the units in native, as I've stated before, are not exactly difficult to kill. They don't have an exuberant amount of HP. They're pretty easy to deal with, and I think the only thing I would kind of need to spec into is probably a little bit more in power throw. I think that's actually the only thing that I really need to spec into if I really want to take the throwing weapons thing seriously, you know. If I actually wanted to be, you know, like a proper ranged character, then obviously specking into, well, specking into archery would probably have made the most sense. But anyway, let's go and just hand in our task at the Guildmaster. That will give us another 1,000, I hope. And we are well on our way to making 10,000 for the die works. So there you go. Oh, and Borcher has advanced two levels. I've advanced another one level. That is fantastic. And we're going to be dealing with those skill points in the next episode. So I thank you very much for watching and for all your support on the series and for sticking with me this long as well. And I will see you next time.